Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking deals on deals on deals. I'm going to be giving you all of my recommendations for the upcoming Sephora VIB sale. This is always a great time to restock on your favorites backups, things you know you're gonna go through, Laura Mercy Translucent Powder, your favorite perfume, your favorite skincare, but these are just some of my personal recommendations because if you can save yourself a few dollar dollar bills, it's definitely the time. Also, can you guys notice anything different? Maybe not because my roots were already really dark, but my ends have been just so faded and dry looking, so I colored my hair the other day. Let me know what you guys think. I feel like I have a ton of products, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with skincare first. Now, I'm not gonna lie, several of these products are pretty darn pricey. I've preached this so many times before. If you're gonna invest anywhere in your beauty routine, I definitely think it should be your skincare because if your skin looks nice, then everything just layers nicely on top of it. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the one body care item that I have in here. This is definitely a splurge for like a body moisturizer, but if you have alligator legs like myself, this is one that is definitely worth it. I'm the type of person where like whenever I pull off my black leggings, if I'm wearing leggings that day, it looks like a snowstorm in my leggings. I know that it's crusty and gross, but I exfoliate my legs, I moisturize my legs, but before I still always had skin, like dry skin flakes in my leggings. It was really, really gross. I'm not sure if that's something that everybody has, but just like the contrast of my leggings made it very apparent. But ever since I started slathering this on at night, I have noticed a huge difference. Now, one thing that I wanna say, because I'm definitely someone who always goes on and reads product reviews like crazy, I saw someone wrote that this smelled like basil and cumin and not like Moroccan oil signature scent. I'm not calling that person a liar by any means. If you happen to be watching this, definitely not saying you're a liar, but I'm thinking that person had to have gotten something that was off because mine definitely smells exactly like everything else in the Moroccan oil line or at least like the Moroccan oil products that have that just velvety, warm, it's like warm and slightly sweet. If you guys have smelled Moroccan oil, you know what I'm talking about. But this is from their body care line. It's the Night Body Serum. It says that it firms and smooths. I put this everywhere from my knees to the bottom of my feet to like my weenus everywhere and I wake up with my skin just feeling so moisturized, just plump and smooth and silky and you still kind of get that really nice glow that you get from shimmery body oils. For instance, something like the Laura Geller one, you don't get the actual glitter for like I know the new Patrick Ta body oil, which I really do wanna try, but you just get this beautiful glow that I love so much. Plus it smells amazing. My husband always compliments this scent. It's beautiful. So if you have really flaky snowstorm legs and you're looking for something to work, this will do you good. Next up, I have a moisturizer. This is my second bottle. The only complaint I have about this is I hate not being able to quickly see how much product I have left. You really just kind of go by the weight of it. This is from Dermalogica. It is their super rich repair. If you have really dry skin and you love products that are just Thick. I use this during the day in the winter, but now since we're getting a little bit more like humid and hot outside, I reserve this specifically for night, but this has been a go-to moisturizer for me for probably about two years now. It is very thick and heavy, so if you have very sensitive skin or skin that is prone to getting like milia or you just feel like things really kind of give you those other small little bumps around your skin. This may be one that you want to skip, but if you're really dry and you love heavy, thick, this is slightly greasy, this one is for you. I absolutely love the Super Rich Repair. It is pricey, but if it's a product that I can use at day and night, I really don't mind splurging because like I said, if you're gonna invest, let it be in your skincare. Now, the newest favorite that I have in here, I have raved about this in probably my last three videos. This is the Tatcha the Dewy Skin Cream. I saw that there's actually a Dewy Rich Night Cream as well that I'm really wanting to try. Let me know if you guys would be interested in a Sephora VIB wish list video or if you're like, nah girl, we don't care about what you want. But what I love about this is like the water cream, you still get hydration, but I feel like it's an extra level of hydration. I mentioned this in a previous video, Tatcha Water Cream is loved by so many, but I find that to be better for people with normal to oily skin because while you get the hydration, it doesn't really quite feel as thick. This feels thick, not as thick as the Dermalogica. It still penetrates the skin and it doesn't leave any sort of greasy residue behind. And once again, you're left with a glow. This is so beautiful under foundation. I don't use this at all at night. This is like strictly my daytime moisturizer. Plus, since this is a thicker cream, I feel like you get more uses out of this 
versus the Tatcha water cream. I'm not saying the water cream is bad. I'm just saying personal preference wise, I would definitely go with this one. This is another product I've talked about in so many different videos. This is the Super Goop Super Goop Super Screen Daily Moisturizer. Before this, I was raving about, I know it's right here. I use this one a lot too. This is actually my second bottle of the Unseen Sunscreen. I love to slather this on my son's face for like soccer games just because it's water resistant. It doesn't like seep into your eyes if you sweat and it kind of has that silky primer like feeling. So if you have really textured skin, you're looking for something to blur it out or enlarge pores, this is great kind of as a primer and a sunscreen in one. But if you're looking for a sunscreen that still moisturizes and once again gives your skin a glow, the super screen is amazing. It does have the traditional sunscreen scent, but it kind of has like a jello-y type of feeling. It's almost like a gel-like moisturizer. I've swatched this before too, but it gives your skin just this really nice glisten it looks healthy even on days where i'm not going to go in with any foundation of course i'm still wearing my spf as should you but even without any sort of makeup since this has that bit of glow i feel like it kind of distracts from any uneven spots obviously it's not covering that if you were to look at my face you'd see like oh wow her skin looks really healthy and glowy but before you're like um there's lots of redness and splotchiness going on all right i just have two more skincare products this is probably one of the pricier items in here this has rave reviews on Sephora and for good reason. I don't have too many products from Sunday Riley, but Good Jeans is one that I will continue to repurchase. This is my second bottle. I've never had another product change the texture of my skin so much. I've yet to get Botox on my forehead. I feel like I'm getting to the point where I really do need to do it. No matter what I use, I'm still seeing some fine lines and wrinkles that aren't going away. Oh, the blessings of aging. But I really feel like this is keeping my skin in check when it comes to fine lines, texture. It's just a great product. I mean, it has a cult following for a reason. Plus, if you were to try out any of these products and for whatever reason something didn't work, Sephora does have a great return policy. Or you could always go in and ask for a sample first. That way you can really test it. But obviously with skincare, it does take some time to really see the difference. So just Get yourself a good routine and stick with it. I do have one other skincare product. These I absolutely love. I go on and on about hydrogel face masks or sheet masks all the time, but when it comes to eye masks, I prefer these over the hydrogel ones because a lot of the times with hydrogel ones, I have to use those while laying down or sitting still because the texture of the hydrogel eye mask, they just seem to slowly slide down my face. It's so annoying. But these have more of a cotton texture with this gold foil finish. They come in yellow gold and rose gold. I don't think there is a difference between them besides the color, but these are cotton on one side. They are packed with essence. Like they are extra juicy eye patches. The foil on this side I read is supposed to retain the heat and just really keep the moisture on your under eyes. I keep these on for about 20 minutes and when I peel them off, my under eyes look refreshed. I feel like I definitely see a difference with the just sallowness under there. But these have hyaluronic acid, um, green aloe leaf extract, Tons of different things that really help to boost and hydrate your under eyes. Okay, that's all that I have for skincare. Let's go ahead and move on to face products now. I did a full video on these recently and I cannot put them down. These are the Kevna Kwan Glass Glow Face. There are three different shades. We have Crystal Clear, Spectrum Bronze, and then Prism Rose. These are described as a bridge between makeup and skincare. If you are looking for a product to give your face that Korean glass skin glow, these are it. You can wear them under your foundation. You can mix it in with your foundation. You can wear it on top of your foundation. I'm wearing it under my foundation today. If you want to see it really high shine and see how it looks on top of makeup, I'll go ahead and link that video right here. I can't get enough of this product. It is absolutely stunning. And I feel like there's a shade in here for everyone because it definitely is a sheer slightly translucent product with just a slightly tinted base if you go for spectrum bronze. Whenever I use this, I like to slather this all over my neck and chest. I definitely feel like body oils and body mists on trend right now. Not that they haven't been, those are products that go in and out, but this is something that really gives you that nice glow. You can use it on your legs, you can mix it in with your lotion, but if you're not sure what shade to go with, I would definitely recommend translucent, or not translucent, where am I going? Crystal Clear, this is a product that would be flattering on anyone, whether you have really deep skin or really fair skin. I know in the bottle you really see that blue duochrome shift, which typically highlighters that have that, I just kind of stay away from, because. I'm like, oh, I'm not looking for a blue 
glow. The blue shift in this just makes it look glassier. I don't really find that you're seeing blue and green shifts on my face. It just looks like my skin is wet and healthy and just oh. Another product that I've talked about in at least the last 1200 videos on my channel is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood filter. I think this is going to be a product that I pick up during the VIB sale just in a deeper shade. I'm not gonna say much about this. In fact, I'm just gonna say, if you haven't tried this yet, why? Especially if you love glowy skin, you need that. It is, ugh, I hate to say need because obviously you don't need it, but if you are a makeup junkie and you love luminous glowy things and you haven't tried that yet, why? I just have one foundation to recommend because foundation is definitely all personal preference if you have dry skin, if you have oily skin, if you have normal skin, if you have crazy skin. So I just wanted to quickly mention this though because I've never fallen in love with a foundation as quickly as this one. I know I talk on and on about like NARS Radiant Finish and NARS Sheer Glow while I still love those. This is a foundation, I got it in PR, I tried it, and for me lately, Laura Mercier has been killing it. I have so many Laura Mercier products that I use on the daily. In fact, I feel like I should do a full face of Laura Mercier products. This is their Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. It is the foundation that I'm wearing today and almost every day for the last, I don't know how many months, whenever it came out, maybe like three-ish months ago. It is such a beautiful, natural finish, everyday wear type of foundation. It lasts throughout humidity, it feels good, it, even during like colder months, it's not a product where I feel like I really have to add additional hydrating products under. It blends out seamlessly. I would say it is a, media, a high medium coverage foundation. It's just, it makes your skin look like skin, it's beautiful. I, I love it. I don't know what else to say about it. I just love it. Moving on to concealers, Tarte Shape Tape isn't even in my vocabulary anymore. I have not repurchased one of those in I don't know how long. And it's because these, the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. I hate the Born This Way foundation. I know so many people love that foundation. I've tried it with so many different primers, without primers, with brushes, with sponges, with my fingers. And that is just a foundation that does not look good on my skin. I don't know what the trick is to it. I know so many people love it. I'm just not one of them. But if you're like me and you've seen this and you're like, ugh, the Born This Way foundation is like, ugh, so I'm not gonna bother with this, don't sleep on these. These are such amazing concealers. I find them to be hydrating on my under eyes. They are full coverage, just like the Tarte Shape Tape, but you get way more product in these as well. And I'm pretty sure the price range, this one may be a dollar, two dollars more, or is it less? I forget. I will have all the details listed down below though, as always. But for my under eyes, I go between almond and... Is it vanilla? I'm not quite sure. Almond is what I'm wearing today and what I wear the most often. And then for cream contour, chestnut is beautiful just to add some warmth back into my skin. I'm not using this today because I recently fell in love with another bronzer. I do still love this so much though. I've heard lots of people like to use these as their foundation as well, which I could definitely see why because it takes such a thin layer to get so much coverage. Speaking of under eyes, I don't really bake the rest of my face, but I do still like to bake on my under eyes on days like today where I am wearing darker lid shade. I just wanna make sure that my under eyes are really nice and brightened. I still can't put this down. I'm pretty sure that I mentioned these powders in a previous Sephora VIB recommendations, which I'll go ahead and link my previous videos down below. But the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder in Pound Cake is my jam. These are just loose powders that have this mesh inside. I will just go in and bounce my beauty blender in there and just set my under eyes. I've even used, there's Pound Cake, what's the other one? There's the next shade up from this that sometimes I will use to set my forehead or my T-zone. This has some sort of pore blurring effect on my face. It is so soft and finely milled without being dry and cakey looking. It's an awesome setting powder. I go between this one and the Laura Mercier translucent powder, but I would say if I feel like I just need a little bit of extra brightness on my under eyes, this works wonders. I do have one other powder. I'm normally not the biggest powder person, but something about this on the lower portions of my face, I always tell y'all my face somehow just eats makeup in that area. I have been using this just for touch-ups in this lower jaw area. This is the Wander Beauty Wanderlust Powder Foundation in Golden Medium. What I really like about it is it doesn't really seem to add any extra weight of product on my face. There are so many pressed powders like the MAC Studio Fix, is it Studio Fix Foundation? That powder one where I feel like when I apply that, you can see it on my face. This one just kind of melts into my skin. I love the applicator as well. It's a puff that's very similar to the ones that you find in Korean cushion foundations. So I will just lightly set this area 
right here it just keeps my makeup in place oh no I have like some black shadow fallout why didn't y'all tell me that's the only thing I hate about videos I wish you guys could be like oh excuse me girl you got some crumbs down there but this is also just like the under eye gold or the eye masks it's infused with green not green tea green leaf aloe extract so there are hydrating ingredients in this powder okay now moving on to the bronzer that i mentioned earlier these aren't up on sephora right now i had so many of y'all asking me whenever i mentioned these in a recent was it a favorites video or some sort of tutorial i messaged bare minerals and i was like hey what's the release date of these because the pr package that i got just said april 2019 so i thought it would be sooner than later but it's april 21st so hopefully i mean if the dates are right then these should be live on sephora by then but holy cow y'all the bronzers and the highlighters that they release in this clean glow collection are phenomenal i like these more than the becca highlighters that is a bold statement because becca opal was my jam for so many years but the formula of their highlighters are so creamy and silky and just pack a punch my absolute favorite though may actually kind of take some of y'all by surprise it's called joy so it's this like a beautiful peachy coral shade this lash is living its own life over here just hmm, hanging down i'm like come on put a little pep in your step i've been so into the kind of more corally peachy blushes lately that i find this highlighter to be the perfect complimentary highlighter to that blush did that come out right? That just sounded weird when I said it out loud. I think this would look beautiful on all skin tones because it gives you that glow without being like a frosty type of highlighter. It's just, I, there's no shimmer in it. It just glows and is heaven in a compact. All the highlighters in the line are amazing, but Joy, it's just, I think I love it so much because it's different. If you liked Wet n Wild Hummingbird Hype, it's kind of like that, but glowier it's just oh so good okay now for the bronzers there's two in there there's faux tan and warmth which were both bronzers that were released you know with just the regular loose original formula of the bare minerals bronzers but in this pressed format i feel like i can go with layer upon layer upon layer and it doesn't get muddy or thick looking or cakey looking. If I'm just wanting a very sheer wash of bronzer, I could do that. If I'm wanting to go in and get warmth in my cheeks, I could just get, keep going in with layer upon layer upon layer, and it never looks cakey or muddy. Some bronzers, when you do that, it almost looks like you went out into a clay pit. Let me get some bronzer on there. This goes on so silky and beautiful. I cannot wait for y'all to try these bronzers and highlighters because they are so good. I just have one other face product. This I actually mentioned in my March favorite, so I'm not gonna say much about it. NARS has kind of gotten on the ColourPop level recently with new releases, just spewing out the new releases, which I'm not complaining because I love NARS. I actually have other NARS products in here that I wanna recommend. But with their blush palettes, I felt like after the holidays, there was the holiday blush palettes, there was, I want to say like two other blush palettes that came out, but this one, not only is the packaging beautiful, the formula of these blushes in this exposed palette, I've been going so hard with these and it doesn't really look like I've made a dent. I don't know how well I do with these two because I don't use these two that often, but these here, I love. They're following that whole like corally terracotta peachy vibe that I've been going with lately. The highlighter in here is beautiful. I want them to continue making blushes in this same formula. I love the color scheme in it because whether you're more of like a natural tone wear or if you like those pops of pinks, you could really find something in here. But if I'm being honest, I really wish they would have kind of skipped on this color and included a bronzer instead. Then it would be my perfect cheek palette one other nars product that i wanted to mention i have four different shades but they're all the same mine i think oh no this one is a satin lip pencil but then the other three are the velvet matte lip pencils i used to be obsessed with these with dragon girl and then was it like goa or something like that but they recently released these three shades with their summer collection and i cannot put them down the shade good times has been living in my purse that is the one that i have on right now the only con about these i really wish they were retractable instead but these are so pigmented that i really feel like I can use quite a bit before I even have to sharpen them down. I know sometimes though, with some retractable type of cream products, 
the inside bullet will lie out so maybe that's why it's a sharpened option but this one in good times is the perfect everyday nude shade for me if i'm looking for something deeper i love dance fever i did a combo of both of these in a recent video i think it was the subscribers pick my makeup i'll go ahead and leave that there these just feel so nice and lightweight on the lips honestly when i'm wearing them specifically the matte ones i forget that i even have anything on my lips because they're just so light and airy and pillowy for being a matte cream product they actually last on my lips for quite a long time i don't really find myself having to touch up that often now these next products are brand new releases but they are live on sephora's site right now it's the laura mercier silk cream right yeah silk silk cream lipstick from the rouge essential line first of all the packaging is beautiful they're just these like gunmetal chrome magnetic components also the bullet of these lipsticks they hug your lips perfectly cups them just right almost like a luggy pair of earrings they just fit right in there this color though oh i'm not wearing it today because i'm trying to give the whole fireball orange color a rest at least for two videos because i've been wearing them a lot this one is in the shade coral vif or is it vif i definitely should have looked up the pronunciations of these first because i'm sure i'm going to butcher them but it's just one of those amazing like electric neon orange red orange shades that i have been living for lately next up we have the shade brune pale and this is a beautiful soft like very light pinky nude the formula of these are so silky and just like the nars ones while they're not matte they have that lightweight almost non-existent feeling whenever you put them on you honestly don't feel the product besides the actual physical movement of the lipstick gliding on other than that it is so airy and weightless on the lips then we have beige and thyme this one is more of a muted pinky mauve this is a shade that i think would look beautiful on so many different people it goes with so many different eye looks i absolutely love it it's one of those lip colors that you can easily alter to without getting it super funky you know like some days love the color of this but i just want it to be slightly warmer you could just go in with a favorite nude liner and it really just transforms the shade but you still get that really nice just airy type of finish i love these so much i will say though i noticed some of the shades just because i went through and swatched almost all of them on my lips some of these do seem to have more of a glossier easy application whereas some of them kind of stick it's not dry but it doesn't seem to just melt right onto the lips like some of the other shades do. I feel like I've been talking forever, but I love these videos. I definitely think they are helpful because not only are these my recommendations, but clearly these are products that I go to time and time again. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if you would like to see my wish list as well. I could maybe just do a quick video of that or just share on Instagram stories. Either way, let me know down below. Also, be sure to leave some of your recommendations down in the comments. That way we can all share and be a helpful little class. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I hope you guys all have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.